Okay, everybody, we have a new tutorial out. Finally, we are going to do a spleef mechanic. Essentially, it means that when you step on these tiles, they will disappear in a little bit of time. So we're going to use this button to start this. So you could use anything you want. Use a mutator zone or an enter an area thing or a button like I'm doing. And it will start this tracking of the player to tell which hex tile should disappear. So I'm going to click that and you can see it's already started to change. And that one's changed and so on and so forth. So you run around and and they change essentially as fast as you move. And you have a little bit of time to uh, get off of the tile. That's it. And we also have a mode where it just changes the color instead of removing the tiles so that you can play over and over and over again, because what it will do is change back to the other color and keep going so that you can keep playing. But mostly to learn another technique that we can use to play this kind of game. Also, thanks to all the absolute legends over on Patreon. You guys are the best. Thanks for sticking around. Uh, There's going to be a little bit extra at the end of this. And of course, all of the code will be copy pastable from there. Otherwise, let's just get on with learning exactly how to do this. I will show you everything that I did and uh, you guys can build this on your own. OK, as usual, we are inside of UEFN and I didn't explain it in the game, but there's actually a damage volume that sits underneath these tiles here so that if you follow the tiles, when they go away, you get eliminated. The damage volume is very, very simple. If we look in the outliner, we can see that it is set to elimination. And of course, the zone width and height and depth is all set to the size that I need it to be inside of the game. But not important. We're going to disable that, of course, when all the tiles are gone. But you can do whatever you want, obviously. Let's talk about the tiles here because they are the most important part of this map. Other than, of course, this amazing uh, landscape that I put together here. It's another one of these models from Kit Bash. They're really cool. They look so good. Anyhow, so we've got our two buttons as well to start tracking and to turn off tracking. Now, you don't have to do this, but I'm going to show you how to do it in the code in case you want to turn that on and off. Like if you had a timer or something like that, you want it to be available for five seconds and then it turns off for five seconds. And of course, our player honor. OK, so let's talk about these tiles. OK, so the way I made the hexagon tile was inside of Blender. So it is a mesh that I bring in. You can use the modeling tools inside of UEFM, but I really like Blender. So that's what I use all the time. So we're going to delete the cube and we'll go shift A, we're going to get a mesh and cylinder. And then we're just going to set the vertices to six and then the depth to be very small, very uh, 0.1 of a meter, so 10 centimeters. So the measurements inside of Blender are the same inside of UEFN or Unreal Engine, it's in centimeters. So the radius currently is set to one meter. If you want to make it bigger, you can just change the radius to something bigger. I just set mine to one, so it's one meter. Remember, a character is almost two meters high. So that's good reference. So once you've made your hexagon like this, you can choose to put a little bit of a bevel like I did with mine here. You can see there's a little bit of a bevel on these guys. And I kind of like that. It's the way that it was described to me or shown to me inside of the Discord server where I got this question. I thought it'd be kind of fun to do this. So to do that, we go back to Blender and we've got this thing selected. We're going to hit tab to go into edit mode and hit two to get to edge mode. You can see I can select the edge here. It's white. I'm going to alt click to select the whole edge all the way around, control B, and that will create a little bit of a bevel right there. That's pretty good just like that. So once this is done, we'll tab out of that. We'll go to File, Export, FBX. And then when you go to save a mesh from here, we're going to go into the geometry, select face, and then you can just select mesh because we don't want anything else exported from here. We just need the mesh. So we can call this hex tile or whatever you want to call it. All right, so back inside of UEFN, I've created three folders that are holding my stuff. The created devices one is from the game manager, which we're going to cover in a second. So I've got a blueprint, which is the hex tile. We've got the mesh. Uh, actually, we have all of this mesh inside of here from the model of the environment. Uh, but this hex tile here is the mesh we're thinking about. So all I did, if we double click on that, we can see here uh, that we have our mesh in and I've applied a material to it, a yellow material. Nothing special here. The way to bring in this static mesh is literally just to drag the FBX file in. It's nothing to it. Then it's important to organize your project well. So I've made a blueprints folder. And inside of here, you just right click, hit the blueprint class. Now, the reason we want to make a blueprint class, and we're going to make it a building prop, and then we just call it hex. I don't know. It doesn't matter. I'm not going to put anything in here right now. But this is how you would create a blueprint. And then when you open this up, it will give you this window that says, well, what do you want to do with this blueprint? We click the static mesh. And then we can, in this static mesh thing, we can go back to our meshes, 
and then we just drag this guy right to there. So that will bring in that mesh into the blueprint. Go ahead and compile it and then save it and close it. And you're kind of done with making that blueprint. So in here, I've got two blueprints now that are exactly the same. So now inside of here, we're going to drag these blueprints onto the scene because we want to be able to access them with verse. We can't access static meshes with verse. Uh, so we want to use blueprints or objects, usable and reusable objects. So each one of these is just the blueprint. Now let's cover really quickly the materials that I've applied to this. So I've made my own materials, which is really super easy, by the way. If you've never worked with materials, this is very easy. We'll close this, right click, go to uh, the menu and you bring up material. And then we'll just call this blue for now. We'll make a blue one. So this double clicking this opens up this window. So inside of here, you can just hold the number three down and then left click and that will bring up a vector three. And uh, we'll just double click on this, select the blue like so, and then just drag this into the base color and apply. And as you can see, we've made a blue material with a little bit of specular on it. And if we wanted to, we could get rid of all of the roughness to make it a matte finish or make it uh, super shiny like a uh, marble. I don't know. Put the roughest back down, back to one. Okay. Apply, save. And then inside of the mesh that we brought in, we can open this up and you can actually change the material here really easily by going to the materials and just putting in the blue one and then come into the blueprint, hit compile, save that as well. And it'll change them all to be blue. So they'll go from blue to white instead of yellow to white. So that's how you mess with materials. The other material that I could show you is the warning material. Now this material is a little bit more advanced. If you've never worked with animating materials, this might seem a little bit new to you, but essentially I'm setting the material of the tile dynamically. And that is done with the time node that goes into a multiply node that goes into the sign node. So it goes between one and zero essentially. And then we make it a float, add one, multiply by 0.5 so that it is a constant between one or another, not halfway through. And then we are simply using a lerp three color in this example, and we're going between red and white, and that makes it flash red and white. That's it. Okay, so let's take a look at the verse code to make all of this come together. Okay, so here we are inside of verse. Let's close up this left panel. As you can see, there's only one file in here called the game manager. So this is going to make it pretty simple. So let's close that with a control B. That will just have our editing window open only. So we have our game manager. And if you don't know how to create a verse file, I've got a link in the description below on how to do this kind of stuff. So I'm not going to cover all this. Okay, so let's speed run this a little bit and get through the editable. So we've got our player spawner. We've got our track me button and no track me button. Those are the two buttons that turn on and off the tracking for the hex tiles. We've got our damage volume, which eliminates the player if they fall off of the tiles. And we've got all of our hex tiles sitting in an array. So if we take a look in the outliner and select our game manager, you can see we've got all of these hex tiles, but they're sitting inside of an array. So if I just close this up, it hides all of those elements in there. But this is how we were going to add all the tiles so that we can go through with them in an innumerable way, meaning that we can go through them one by one uh, with a counter, essentially. Okay, I'm also keeping a hex map map, which essentially is going to let me know if the item in the array has been set off or not. There are a few ways to do this. So diehard programmers and versers out there know that you probably have another way. Maybe it's a better way. Maybe it's not a better way. There are other ways to do this. Don't worry, this is a good start for most of you. Uh, we're also going to be tracking whether or not we track them. So it's also a logic. So it's a Boolean one or zero, false or true. If we're going to be flipping them, meaning that if we're going to flip from one color to another and which color we're on, and if we are in remove mode or not. So essentially, if we're going to remove tile or not. So these are all useful things to learn. You keep track of the modes of your game. You can switch them dynamically. Okay, so let's take a look at the on begin. The on begin manages the events that happen in the game. So our player spawner is going to spawn event, track me button, no track me button is the interactive with the event. And then initially we're going to set the hex tiles map. So it's initializing our map here is hex map because we want to be able to set whether or not a tile has been touched or not touched so that we're not iterating over them over and over and over. So what that does is it simply wanders through the whole hex tiles array, which you set inside of the game manager, and then it tells the hex map, okay, for this item, set it to false. False meaning that it hasn't been touched or stepped on or whatever it is that you're doing. So we're grabbing the index. We use this little dash greater sign 
to create a pointer in the array to refer to because our map here, the unique value is an int and logic is the value. So here inside of our map, we need a unique value for our key and we need a value for what's going to be in the map. Logic is not unique. It can be whatever, but the int has to be unique because it's a key. So that's how we're doing that. We're just setting up that map there. No problem. If we're tracking player, which is done when we press the start track player button, the stop track player button just simply sets do track player to false. It will cancel out the loop that we're about to do. The start track player, which is which is triggered by the button, uh, sets the do tracking to true and then spawns track player. We need to spawn this because we have a suspends function happening because we need to loop because in a loop you can't have it running all the time. So we have to sleep a little. Hence the suspense. If you're confused about suspense, I covered that in a whole tutorial as well. This is the key function that we need to look at. Track player. We pass in the agent that we're going to be tracking. This is going to run its own kind of thread. It's a suspense, so it means, to, it means that it's going to sleep a little. And then we're going to loop something. So if do track player equals true, do all this stuff. If not, break out of this loop. We're going to sleep for 0.1. That's important while we do all of this stuff. So first thing we need to do is grab the fort character because the fort character has a position of the player. We're going to figure out where the player is in space and whether or not that's anywhere near the tile that we're looking at. So we're going to go through the whole array of tiles and uh, just see, yeah, where's the player? Is the player near it? If so, do something. So we grab the player position with the get transform and translation, which gives back a vector three, which is an X, Y, Z uh, positioning. Very, very important. We're going to check all the tiles. So we're going to keep track of if we found a tile, we found a tile. Don't go through the array anymore. Although we can't break out of a four. We just stopped doing our functionality. Unfortunately, they don't have a break out of a for loop yet. So whatever. Anyway, so we're going to go through all of the hex tiles, which is essentially everything in an array that we set up in the game manager. And then we're going to grab the value that's inside of the hex map in accordance to the index that we are referring to when we're doing the array search. So an array starts at zero, goes to one, two, three, four, however many are in there, starts at zero. That is our index. Maps are not necessarily indexable, but we are using the index of the array to set the values inside of the map to figure out whether or not it's been set off or not. If that value is false, meaning that that tile inside of that array has not been touched yet, then uh, we're going to set if found tile is false or no. We're going to check and make sure that the tile has not been found yet because we can't break out of a for loop. We got to do this weird check for stuff. So then we're going to grab the position of that particular tile, which is the hex tile in the array here, the hex tiles array. We've said, hey, get that object inside of that array as a hex tile. It's a creative prop, which is a blueprint. Hopefully this is all coming together. And then we're going to grab the distance. I call it D because it's simple. It's a float. Distance is going to come back in centimeters. So the distance between the player position and the hex tile position, if that is less than 110.0, we found the tile. If we are in remove mode, which means we're going to remove the tile from the game, then we're going to spawn this remove tile thing, pass in the index, pass in the hex tile. But if not, then all we're going to do is just light it up. So we set the white material or yellow material uh, with a set materials. The other cool thing about blueprints is you can set their material. You can set their mesh as well, by the way, which is very, very cool. Uh, so the hex style will set the material to be white or yellow, depending on which flip mode we are in. And you can do this for all kinds. You can have all kinds of colors if it's in mode one, mode two, mode three, mode four, and then just have a whole pile of materials if else is to set them. Too. So we want to set that the, the tile has been found so we don't keep going over this anymore. And then we will so we'll set the value of the hex map for this index to true because we have set off this tile. So we don't want to look at this tile again. We're, it's already been found. So we're going to ignore it from this point. And then we're going to check for all the tiles to be complete. Sleep for 0.1 after that. OK, so let's cover the remove tile. If we're in remove mode, which is going to probably be what most of you will do. If we're in remove mode. We're going to go to the remove tile function here. We grab the index of it and the hex tile remember that. And then we're going to set the material to the warning. So remember that flashing uh, material that I made sleep for two seconds. You can make this shorter or longer. It's just a couple of seconds that you're going to sleep and then hide it. When you hide it, 
it actually removes collision now. This didn't used to be the issue. You used to have to really move blueprints around to make the collision go away, but now when you hide, uh, collision goes away. So all you have to do is hide the hex tile and that will make somebody fall off, which is kind of cool. And then we'll take a look at the check for all tiles complete, which is just a little further down. I haven't done anything with the on player spawned. Generally, I would manage player objects and stuff like that, but we're not covering that in this tutorial. It's too much. So check for all tiles complete. We're going to set complete to true. So essentially, I'm going to check to see if all of the tiles have been touched. By default, I'm going to make that true so that when I wander through this hex map for the trues and falses for the index of each one, uh, I want to see if there's a false. If there's a false, then automatically we just set complete to false. We're not done yet. If complete is true, then do this, which is to, if we're not in remove mode, then we're going to spawn the flip the mode for flipping the color to the other side, which is down here. So we go flip mode. It's a suspense because we're going to sleep for a second to give it just a little bit of a delay to register for the player that they change the color of the tile they are on. And then we're going to set all the hex tiles map values back to false, so untouched. And then we're going to just flip the flip mode value so that we know to go between white and yellow or blue and whatever color. So that is just a toggle, essentially. And if it is in remove mode, then we are going to remove the damage volume. So essentially the game is over or whatever is the case. Maybe this is how I've done it. And that's it. <laughs> it's a bit of a speed run. If you have any questions, let me know anytime. And uh, I will see you guys in the next one.